Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks Thursday. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you two different ways to fix the charge port on an iPad Air 5. Now the methods that I use can be implemented across all of the iPads of course and I'll let you be the judge which one you would choose. Let's get into the video. So to get started, this iPad Air 5 got some liquid damage in the charge port which caused it to stop charging. I've already taken it apart and I've got it under the microscope so that I can assess the charge port and see if I can recover it without having to replace it. But even if I can recover it without replacing it, I'm going to show you the other method which is replacing the entire charge port assembly that's not only the charge port itself but the flex cable that comes on so that you can assess for yourself which one you would do. So let's head on over to the microscope and get started. All right, and so a little bit more cleaning. I'll be able to see if all those are pads or if all those pins are still good. So look at the back side. It's looking pretty nasty as well. But now that is looking a ton better. So my main concern at this point is did the water damage get under and on the pins inside of there? So let's do a quick check on that. I'm gonna take a little bit of captain tape. I'll tape that off just so it doesn't melt a little bit. Even if it melts a little, it's okay. Now I'm gonna take my hot air gun. And looking at it on the underside, it was clean, which means I'm going to be able to put this back together. These little guys came off. You can see they're not sticking anymore, so I'll have to adjust for that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is wick the through holes here, add some flux, clean out the hole, clean out the other one, and like this. I will just line everything up, get those legs through, give it a bit of a squeeze, and we'll solder it on. And We'll heat it up one more time. And the last step is going to be to make sure that those legs get soldered properly. So we'll take a little bit of solder here, push it on through those holes. And there we go. Tapped it into place. It was just barely off from where I wanted it. Yep, that's much better. Perfectly aligned where I want it. Cool it down with some isopropyl alcohol. We'll clean it up with a q-tip. Now some of you might be wondering why in the world would you take so much time? Well really the amount of time it took me to do this was less most likely than if I were to replace the whole flex cable because of having to remove this board from the, the frame with all of the components that you have to disconnect and reconnect and uh, in this case it just made more sense to do it this way because all I was doing was fixing the issue which was the corrosion and then double checking to make sure that it was all good. So I didn't necessarily need to remove the port in this case from the flux but I did just to be sure. I didn't want to go plug it in with it potentially being shorted out still. So the last thing that I'm going to do is put on some new glue to cover up these components. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to get the job done. All right, we'll reinstall the port in the frame. We'll screw it on down. We'll reinsert this flex into the SIF connector. We'll smooth out the flex. Put the sticker back, put this one back as well. We'll take out our plastic piece here. That's protecting the battery from making contact. As soon as we've got the display and digitizer reconnected. All right, so. That is how to do the port. Now, let me just show you guys real quick. Got it out of the frame. For those of you that want to do it, what well, might be the easier way if you've taken the time to take it, the board out, what we'll do is we're going to peel up the sticker here and we'll peel this guy off. And I just set it here off to the side so I can reuse it later. I'm going to take some 138 solder paste. This low melt solder paste will allow us to bring the overall temperature that the solder needs to get to on the board down so that the solder will let go and we can get the flex off without pulling any pads. We'll turn on our soldering iron and now we're just gonna go and flood all of these solder pads with some solder. I'm gonna add some flux, take some 
wick and we're really going to try to suck up as much of the solder as we can. Now we'll take the, the pair of tweezers and I'm going to carefully go on the edge here, lift up the flex, giving it a little of tension and this will allow the solder to start to let go of the flex as we move along it that back into focus. Just want to find a starting point. I'm just going to add some low melt solder again and we'll leave a little bit more on it this time and with this low melt on there it should come off relatively quickly. We're not going to be yanking on it we're going to take our time and it'll come up nice and easy and we'll slowly and surely get the board off having it let go of all of the pads with the help of that 138 solder paste. We'll clean off the adhesive and I'm going to come in with a 183 and a bit of 138. And we're going to mix these solders together so that we have a kind of a mid range solder on there. All right, we'll come in and we'll mix those solders together, basically adding solder to the pads. We're going to try to avoid getting the gold little squares there on either side, just like that. Take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. We're going to wipe away the area just like that. We'll get a brand new iPad Air 5 charging port flex cable, blue to match the original. And this is an OEM pull, which means you can see the solder that has already basically been pre-tinned. So what I'm going to do is we'll add a little bit of flux to the other side here and we'll smear that around. And I like to put some on the windows, these little square windows here on the edge, like so. And then I'm also going to put some flux on the top side as well. We'll spread that out like that. We'll line this up, getting those windows to line up perfectly with the gold squares. And I'm content with that one, so I'm going to try to tack this first pin here and that's not moving so we'll go over and look at the other one and it's right on as well where i want it actually it's a little off i'll take the tweezers push it to where i want it and we can push down we'll just do that all the way across adding solder if necessary making sure that each one of the pads is making solid contact with the pad on the board below. All right, and the final step is gonna be to add some isopropyl alcohol. Or you could use a Q-tip. And we're gonna go over and we're gonna really clean up all of the flux. You may need your find, to find yourself bringing out a brush if some of the burnt flux isn't getting cleaned up. And that is what it should look like when you've gotten it nice and aligned and everything. Just gonna peel up this sticker 
now. If you mess the sticker up, you can always use captain tape. And we'll just stick that on back down. Like so. All right, and the final step is gonna be to add some isopropyl alcohol, or you can use a Q-tip. And we're gonna go over and we're gonna really clean up all of the flux. You may need to find yourself bringing out a brush if some of the burnt flux isn't getting cleaned up. And that is what it should look like when you've gotten it nice and aligned and everything. Just gonna peel up this sticker now. If you mess the sticker up, you can always use captain tape. And we'll just stick that on back down like so. And that is how we get a new charge port on and two different ways depending. And that's how we do a charge port in two different ways depending on how much work you wanna do. All right, you can see we've got the new charge port in there and you can see we are in fact charging and fully charged now. So that's the two ways that you can go about replacing the charge port on an iPad Air 5. And there you go. As you can see, we got it up and charging again. Obviously, I didn't have to go through the process of doing it the second way, but I wanted to show you how to do it. Now, of course, if you've done this before, you may have a different technique. Leave it in the comments below. This is a place for learning, so hopefully we can continue to do that together. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for another video. Bye.